Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans. Now, way back in the dark ages of my channel I reviewed the 11th Doctor's TARDIS playset. And I hated it because it was mostly made of cardboard and didn't have any electronic lights or sound effects or moving features like the 10th Doctor's TARDIS playset. But was the 10th Doctor's version really so much better? Or were we all looking back on the 10th Doctor's merchandise era with rose-tinted glasses? Stop it. Anyway, let's find out, as today I will finally be reviewing this, which is the 10th Doctor's TARDIS playset. And here it is in its gigantic packaging. As you can see, it's orange and yellow with a massive Doctor Who logo at the bottom with TARDIS playset written underneath it. To the side we have an image of its police box exterior and the vorpy, vorpology, vorpified sound the TARDIS makes when in flight is printed above it. On the other side we have an image of the fully assembled playset which is over 60 centimeters when it's fully assembled. But it also has a price tag covering the image which I still haven't removed since I bought it way back in 2007 from Smith's Toys. Thirty-one ninety-nine, eh? Hard to believe. Anyway, at the bottom there is a list of its features, including a motorized time column with pulsating lights, an illuminated console with six control buttons, removable floor panels, and a flip-up console panel, and twelve great sound and light effects. The display window is nice and big and shows off the actual electronic console of the playset, with the rest of it disassembled and stored behind this excellent diorama of the console room. This was a great idea. That means the toy still looks good in its packaging, even though it hasn't been constructed. We have a graphic to the side telling us that there is motorized time column movement, while on the other side there is an image of the 10th Doctor action figure to give off a sense of the scale. Finally, we also get a Try Me option, which is activated by pushing a button on the console. The console and the time motor will pulsate green for a few seconds while an amalgam of some of the sound effects is heard, but the time motor itself does not move while in Try Me mode. On both sides, we get the same information, two images of the illuminated console, along with that list of its features, and a little bit of a bio on the TARDIS itself, just, you know, in case you didn't actually know what a TARDIS was. Yeah... On the top we again get that list of features along with a bigger image of the fully assembled playset. The bottom is just black, while the back has some more images of the playset, along with another image of the toy itself, along with the Tenth Doctor and K9 figures. And just for the fun of it, yet again a list of its features. And in the corner there's just a list of its contents and some legal garb. So that does it for the packaging. Let's open it up and get this thing built. Okay, so here it is, and... I have to admit, it looks very impressive, and it's instantaneously recognisable as the 9th and 10th Doctor's console room. We have that impeccably detailed console and time rotor section in the middle, the five coral buttresses surrounding it, the green raised floor, the handrails, the seats, the ramp which leads to the police box doors, and that section of the wall which is detailed with that yellow and black roundels pattern from the interior. All in all, it's a nice little recreation of the actual real life set. The highlight is, without a doubt, that console and time rotor. It's where we get the most detail and features on the toy. At the bottom you can see a series of black wires running around it with some silver pipes descending into the bowels of the ship, while above the console is littered with all of the bits and pieces of junk which make up the controls of the TARDIS, which are moulded to this translucent plastic which allows the light from the green LEDs inside to shine through. Each one of the six segments has its own unique detailing and design and is a perfect recreation of that actual section of the console seen in the show. Around the six sections we also have some more detailing of other various bits of junk, some of which is even recognisable such as the bike pump and the handbrake. I particularly love the cream section which runs around the lower part of the console which contains some great screen accurate detailing along with some of these porcelain style cracks which mirrors the 9th and 10th Doctor Sonic screwdrivers. The console also includes that silver monitor which, as seen in the series, can be moved around the console through 360 degrees, and also includes a sticker featuring an image of green Gallifreyan text. Moving on up to the time rotor, at the bottom we get two rounded pieces of cream plastic which contain more of that cracked porcelain effect, while the time rotor itself is a cylinder of transparent plastic containing two smaller pieces of curved and wavy cylinders. The time rotor is also adorned with several pieces of triangular plastic at the bottom and top. The top itself is again made up of more of those rounded pieces with the cracked porcelain effect, and at the top we have this rounded section which is connected to the five buttresses. 
The buttresses look great with a very screen accurate design, but for me, the colouring is off slightly and the blue sections kind of detract from their overall appearance. They clip into two sections at the base. The base is made from grey plastic, which contains a lower level and an upper level. The actual flooring, however, is made from card, with the design of the green lighting below the linked metal plating, which makes up the floor, printed onto it. But it does its job well. I like how on the upper level we get that kind of bright ring of light, while on the lower level there is some detailing of rusty pieces around the edges. A ramp leads away from the lower level of the base to the doors, with silver sides, which includes these oval-shaped things. And on the top there is a red tile pattern. There are some grey railings on each side, which also have some blue rust sections painted over them in various places. The doors look Excellent, with those black cushioned buffers up both sides and the inverted police public call box signage at the top which even includes detailing of those bulbs which illuminated it in the show. The back of the doors are correctly painted white and we also get the brown and bronze phone which hangs on the back of the pull to open sign and you can also see some rough detailing of the Yale lock on the other door. The windows are just plain white plastic with the design of the sills painted blue. There's only one quote-unquote wall on this playset, which, just like the floor, is made from cardboard. The detailing on the inside looks nice, with a perfect recreation of the roundel design seen around the walls of the actual interior, while at the bottom we have a cluster of thick green and blue wires. On the exterior we have this wonderful vortex image, which incorporates elements of the time vortex with those kind of ringed sections there, as though the TARDIS is travelling through it. But we also get some stars and what kind of looks like some red and orange and pink spacey wacy flowers and such, which adds to the dynamic look of the exterior. The front of the police box doors looks nice as well, with the lantern at the top, the police public call box signage, and the white windows, which I really wish were kind of made from a translucent plastic instead, to match the exterior of the flight control TARDIS. We do get that wood grain effect, but sparingly as it appears only on some parts of the doors, but not on the actual panels, which are smooth. The pull to open sign is present in all its glory alongside the handles for the doors, which are not painted, but we do get a bronze keyhole. Wow, okay, I think that's everything. That was a lot of detail to talk about, but overall, it's worth it and looks excellent. Taking a look at features, sliding the switch from the try me mode to on mode activates the light and sound effects. The green LEDs inside the console illuminate the six control panels and the time rotor, which looks awesome. The toy will also begin to emit a looped audio of the generic background hum of the TARDIS, which is a little bit too loud and repetitive, which as a result can become quite irritating. This cream button on the side of one of the control panels activates the TARDIS's takeoff and landing sound effects. When pressed, the two clear plastic cylinders on the inside of the time rotor will move up and down together and away from each other, which gives it an awesome screen accurate sequence, but at the same time is hard on the batteries as the LEDs begin to flicker during the rotor's movements. And speaking of which, the noise of the groaning motor as it moves the time rotor up and down is very loud and can be heard over the actual sound effects, which is somewhat disappointing. The clear plastic button on the control panel to the right activates one of two sound effects. A power-up noise, and a bizarre effect, as though the TARDIS is struggling to travel through the vortex. This black and silver rectangular button on the next panel over activates a much longer time rotor sequence and sound effect, as though the TARDIS is travelling through time and space normally. On the next panel across, this rounded transparent button again gives us one of two sound effects. One sounds like the Doctor throwing some general switches around the console, while the other again seems to depict the TARDIS experiencing some kind of trouble as it flies. Next up we have my favourite control panel. This one actually opens when it's pressed, along with a whooshing sound effect. Pressing down on the panel again will cause the TARDIS to emit the noise of the Dr. Sonic screwdriver, which, while it isn't actually a TARDIS noise, is still pretty cool for the kids during play. On the next panel over, this blue square button emits a bleeping signal noise similar to the Slothene's message from World War III. Pressing it again causes the TARDIS to emit some more of those random button pressing and general tinkering sound effects. 
Finally, the sixth panel contains no buttons whatsoever, but I think the takeoff and landing button kind of counts as this panel's feature. Looking at its other features, the doors do both open, but unfortunately due to the steep ramp in front of them, they actually open the wrong way. The view into the TARDIS from the outside of the police box does look nice, but as the console is closer to the doors due to the scale, the view isn't actually accurate. The TARDIS also offers three removable floor panels, which slot out from the base, revealing an undersection of the console room, made of dark green plastic with some gadgetry and wiring moulded into it. I would have liked that to actually light up though, but this is not the case. It would make a great place for storing the various action figures' accessories if it wasn't for the holes in the sides of these sections. Turning to accessories, the TARDIS comes with two of these curved railings which can be slotted into the base and look very nice, with those foam bits tied to the top railing just like in the show. There's also a car seat with extra seats attached so more people can sit on it. Only the Doctor, eh? The seat has a fair amount of detail with the stitching and the fabric, a bizarre red section below it and a silver footrest. Oh, and a wheel on the back of it for some reason. Maybe the Doctor turns it to adjust the height of the seat? I don't know. The seat can be attached pretty much anywhere on the top section of the floor. We also have a hat stand, which looks great, but is white instead of brown. No idea why, but still it's nice that they included it. There's also a hammer and a mallet on a rope which hangs from the base of the console. That's an excellent little touch that references all those times the Doctor had to lovingly beat his machine to get it to work. Doing a size comparison, you can see that the 5 inch figures, such as the 10th Doctor, don't look too out of place when standing on it, but it's by no means a 1 to 1 scale. So for example, the junkyard TARDIS from the Doctor's wife can't fit inside it like it did in that episode. And you can also see that the police box doors are a little smaller than the flight control TARDIS toy. So overall, what do I think of this toy? Well, it's been 7 years since I first bought it. And I love it now just as much as I love it then. The lights and sounds are excellent, the motorised time motor is a great idea, and the detail throughout is brilliant. Its features and accessories are pretty much the cherry on the cake. All in all, it's a wonderful toy. Having said that, I find it really distracting that only one small section of the playset contains any actual wall. The rest of it is all open, which... I know it was done on purpose so kids could play with it from multiple angles, but personally, I would have liked one half of the toy to have been completely covered in, just like the actual set, with a wall connected to a spindle on the top so it could be spun around, so kids could still use it in whatever angle they chose. But that's just me. It would also have been nice to have had a switch to mute the ambient noise the console makes, as the set would look great up on display with just the green LEDs lit and without that annoying sound effect. It also does annoy me that the base and sidewall are made from card, as that can be damaged very easily during play. But here's an interesting thing. Despite the lack of sound and light effects, I hated the fact that the 11th Doctor's TARDIS playset had multiple holes, wasn't to scale, and some of it was cardboard. And yet here, this 10th Doctor's TARDIS has all of the same faults, but I still love it. In all fairness, the 11th Doctor's playset had an equally detailed console and time rotor, it just had no electronics. I think it has something to do with more than just the inclusion of lights and sounds. Maybe this playset works regardless of its faults, because it's based on such a better designed set than the 11th Doctor's version. Let's face it, this TARDIS has grace, symmetry, it's an excellent design, whereas the 11th's felt like a mess, and as a result the toy wasn't too well received. Some real effort has been put into this TARDIS interior, be it the electronics, features, or even the fact that the back of the cardboard has a design on it and wasn't just left blank. This is the perfect example of an item which fits into both the toy and collectible categories. It has enough features and functions to keep kids happy, while it also contains enough detail to look excellent when up on display. Even the packaging looks great. I would happily have this up on my shelves fully assembled or packed away in its box. That's a sign of great packaging, when you can buy an item and display it mint in its box, yet still enjoy looking at it just as much as if it were out of its box. It's the perfect toy to sum up the long gone golden years of character options and their once great, highly detailed collectible figures and playsets, and looks excellent as the centrepiece of any self-respecting Doctor Who fans collection. And so that does it for this review. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there are countless more reviews online. Thank you again for watching, and remember to keep following the nerd. Goodbye.